Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, if you're new here. Hi, my name is Sydney, I film cruelty-free beauty videos, and today's video is going to be my Will I Buy It video for this week. I do want to throw in a quick little kind of disclaimer at the beginning of this video. I know that with everything happening right now, a lot of us aren't buying makeup, we aren't buying extra things that aren't necessities, um, and I'm not trying to make this video to push purchasing new things on you. I personally like to just discuss new makeup. I follow makeup like I follow sports, well, I don't really follow sports, that's a lie, but I kind of follow makeup like some people follow sports. So talking about new releases, talking about new trends, that's still really fun for me even if I'm not going to buy them. So I hope that that is how you guys enjoy these videos as well. This series is inspired by Amy Loves Makeup Indie Makeup, New Indie Makeup. Why can I never remember the name of that series? Her Will I Buy It video as well as Samantha Marge's Will I Buy It video and I will link all of the Instagram accounts that I use to create this video down below. But I'm going to stop rambling on and let's hop into it. Alright you guys, usually I try to limit myself like how many releases I talk about but I feel like I have a lot to talk about today so I'm going to try to go through these pretty quickly because I like to keep these videos on the shorter side. The first product I want to talk about is the new highlighter from Linda Holberg Cosmetics. It is called the Infinity Highlighter and they're only releasing one shade. Now I'm always interested when brands only release one shade of highlighter because as you guys can tell, I'm Casper Pale. So usually when this happens, these highlighters tend not to flatter my skin tone. Like when Anastasia released Amreason, everyone lost their minds over it. I never got to try it because I went in stores and swatched it and it was just too dark. So this looks like a pretty like golden champagne-y shade. Sometimes I can pull off these shades, sometimes I can't. It really just depends. I really want to try Linda Hallberg Cosmetics for a very long time at this point, but I've never taken the plunge. I don't think this is the product I'll take the plunge with just because I know that I'm not going to be able to see this in stores and shipping it back to return it is kind of a hassle so I don't think I'll be purchasing this but I did think it was interesting. Next up we have some new products from Milk Makeup and these are centered around melatonin. I don't know anything about skincare, the science behind skincare, I'm going to be honest with you guys, um, but they're coming out with a lip mask and a serum stick. They both just say melatonin lip mask, melatonin overnight stick. I feel like these are super gimmicky. I have not tried any of Milk Makeup skincare. Honestly, not a lot of it appeals to me. I am kind of interested in that new moisturizer that they released a couple of months, weeks ago, months ago. Um, but other than that, it doesn't particularly interest me. And I think this one's just a little bit gimmicky. Again, I don't know the science behind it. So if you guys do, leave it for me down in the comments below. I would love to learn a little bit more, but I'm not going to be purchasing that. Next up, I think this is a new product from AOA Studio. If you guys aren't familiar with AOA Studio, it's Shop Miss A's in-house brand. And from what I've tried from the brand, that's one of the higher quality items that they sell on their website. So I'm always intrigued when they release a new product. And I believe they recently released this foundation. It's called the Pro Wear Full Coverage Foundation. I have not tried any of their complexion products. I was very intrigued by their concealer but I didn't end up trying it and right now they're not doing the $1 shipping that they usually do when they launch a new product so I won't be purchasing this right away but it's definitely one that I'm very intrigued by. I feel like when I saw them talking about this it was more of a liquidy foundation, it's supposed to be very buildable and that is right up my alley right now. I'm really not into super full coverage right now, I'm more into buildable coverage so I can do very sheer light coverage in the spots where I don't need a lot of coverage or heaviness and then just a little bit of coverage, usually on my cheeks, maybe a little bit on my chin is where I tend to need more coverage but this is one that definitely caught my eye. I'm always on the hunt for an affordable foundation. The Balm is releasing some new face products, so it looks like they are releasing a blush palette and then two individual blushes, along with a tinted moisturizer and an eyeshadow palette, I think. This is a pretty big collection for the Balm. I feel like when they release products, they tend to just release one or two of them. Um, I was a little confused when I read that they were releasing a tinted moisturizer because I thought they already had a tinted moisturizer. I think it's called like the Balm Shelter tinted moisturizer. Maybe that's been discontinued and I just wasn't aware. I think that the balm does packaging so so well. That's honestly why their new releases catch my attention at all. Usually the products themselves aren't really revolutionary. They're not really what I'm looking for or what I'm looking to add to my collection at the moment, but I think their packaging is so so cute. Like the little blush palette is called Will Powder uh, and then... And then the, the eyeshadow palette is called The Balm and the Beautiful. I think that's so stinking cute. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the products. I got a little bit sidetracked. But I think the blush tones look really pretty. I just don't need more blush right now, especially not powder blush. And then as far as the eyeshadow palette goes, I haven't tried The Balm's eyeshadow formula in maybe a couple years ago. This palette really would have spoke to me and I would have been super excited about it. But for right now, I'm not super into it. So I'll be passing on all of that. 
Next up, we have a new palette from Stila, and I feel like it's been a while since Stila has released a palette. Um, this is called the Road Less Traveled Eyeshadow Palette, and I don't know, you guys, there's just something about this palette that really doesn't do it for me. I mean, objectively, it's pretty, but it doesn't inspire me in any way. I've never tried Stila shadows, and honestly, I haven't heard anyone talk about them in years honestly since they had those like in the light palettes in the garden palettes you know what i'm talking about those were super old um but i just really have no interest in trying this palette okay this next release from dominique cosmetics really made me do a double take because at first when i saw these i don't think i read the caption very closely but i thought that she was just releasing individual shades of her powder highlighter that she had in her i think it's called the prisma glow kit she released that eyeshadow palette or not eyeshadow palette she released that highlighter palette a few months ago a few months ago i think um and i thought it was beautiful i've really wanted to try it more from dominique cosmetics i just got my first palette from them a couple of months ago so i'd really love to try it more from the brand but when i saw that palette i knew that a lot of those shades were far too deep for my skin tone and i was like for that price tag i would rather just save my money and buy individual highlighters so when I saw these, I was like, oh cool, these look pretty similar to the ones she included in that palette. I thought she was just releasing them as singles. But now that I'm reading the caption again, I feel like these are the same formula, just new shades and available individually. I'm not really sure. These are called the Skin Gloss Highlighters. They provide an all-over skin enhancer, provides hydration, a glass skin look, long-lasting and a natural glow with hyaluronic acid and a cream to powder finish. These retail for $25 each. I'm really intrigued by these. I'm still not really sure if they're a cream or a powder, but I'm definitely intrigued by them and I do want to try more from Dominique Cosmetics. I won't be purchasing these anytime soon because I went a little crazy with the makeup stress buying. Um, you guys will see a haul on my channel pretty soon, but I just thought I'd mention them. Okay, this is one that I am super duper excited about, you guys, because Makeup Revolution is releasing their own version of, like, an cosmetic CC cream. They're calling it the CC Perfecting Foundation. This has an SPF of 30, and it looks like they have a pretty good range of shades. I feel like Makeup Revolution usually does a really great job of releasing really large, diverse shade ranges. I have wanted to try the It Cosmetics CC Cream for such a long time. I feel like, especially now, it would just be right up my alley. I'm much more into lighter, medium coverage, except in the spots, of course, where I need a little bit more coverage, which is usually on my cheeks. But I am so excited about these. I feel like at the drugstore, there's not really a comparable dupe to the It Cosmetics CC Cream. I've tried the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer, but unfortunately, I'm 98% sure that that is breaking me out. So I can't use that one. So I would really love if this came to Ulta so I could give it a little test. I don't believe it's at Ulta yet, but I'm hoping that it will be soon. Ooh, this one is so exciting, you guys. So Olimar Cosmetics is sneak peek that they are releasing new blush palettes. I've wanted to try Olimar Cosmetics so badly for so, so long. They were one of the brands that I featured in my 20 indie brands I want to try in 2020 video. If you guys want to watch that, I'll link it down below. It was so much fun to film, but I am dying to try Olimar Cosmetics. But currently, the only blushes that they have are matte blushes, and I was ready to buy those matte blushes. They are such unique, beautiful tones that I was just like, okay, I'll just buy them. Even though I'm really preferring more of a shimmery blush these days, but these blushes look so beautiful, so shimmery, and so glowy, and so I'm really, really, really hoping she comes out with glowy blush palettes. I would love to try something like that from the brand, and honestly, I'm kind of surprised that they haven't released glowy chic products yet. I feel like Gabby M Gabby T M U A, I think that's her name, um, she like rocks a super glowy cheek most of the time, but maybe I'm wrong. So I thought that would be like the first product that they came out with, but now they're coming out with it, so I'm so excited. And then this product, I think it's a little bit older, but I was watching Amy Loves Makeup Indie Makeup Releases video, and she mentioned this product, and I was like, what? I didn't even know that was a thing. So you guys remember the RCMA powder that was super popular on YouTube years and years ago. Everyone raved about it. I wanted it for so, so long, and then eventually I was just like, I don't really want anything else on Beautylish, so I never placed an order, and I never placed an order, and then I kind of forgot about it. But they actually came out with a pressed version, and I believe this retails for $22. I don't think it's a better value than buying the loose version, and honestly, that part alone kind of makes me like, hmm, maybe I should still just buy the loose version, but if you guys wanted to try it and the fact that it was loose and the packaging was terrible was holding you back, this could be a great option for you. Again, it's not super new, but I just found out about it, so I did want to share it with you guys. 
I do have a couple more releases to mention. I realized that when I film these videos, I never ever look on like the new section on like Ulta or Sephora. So I want to start doing that because usually there are a couple things on there that aren't mentioned like on Trend Mood or anything like that. So let's just go through those really quickly. I just have a couple of products. So Tarte is releasing mini sizes of some of their products. And one that I'm very interested in is the Found Sealer Skincare Foundation. I don't know why, but I feel like I'm so attracted to this foundation. <laughs> There's something about it. I think it's the name. I like the packaging that I just really, really want to try. And the mini is only $15, which is much more palatable for me. <laughs> I'd, of course, probably wait till I had like a 20% off prestige coupon to grab this. But I think this would be a really great way to try out a high-end high foundation without taking the plunge myself. They do have a shade that looks like it might be light enough for me. I'm not going to order this until I can go back into Ulta stores and really swatch the shades out and figure out if it would work for me or if not. But I was pretty excited about that one. Tarte is releasing a lot of new stuff. I realized it's all the stuff that I screenshotted from Ulta. So they are releasing a Busy Gal Goals Eye and Cheek palette. This is like an all-in-one palette. I feel like if you would have thrown this palette at me like two years ago, I would have been, yes, I love that. It's going to be so convenient. But I've had a couple of these palettes in the past, and maybe it's just that the quality wasn't what I was looking for at the time. But I don't really use these palettes. I like to bounce around in my collection, grab different eyeshadow palettes, grab different blushes and highlighters. I think that's just kind of the fun of makeup for me, so I won't be grabbing this one. Then the final palette that I want to talk about is, again, from Tarte. And this is their Sugar Rush Sunbeams and Daydreams eye set. So this one I really, really wanted to chat about because this is so out of the ordinary for Tarte. Well, parts of it are. Parts of it are out of the ordinary. So I feel like Tarte is really good at creating those soft, kind of purpley, mauve tones that make up that top row. But where I'm like, Tarte's starting to branch out a little bit is with that beautiful matte yellow and the matte green. I feel like we've definitely seen them do the matte teal and I think that's a shimmery navy in the corner. But the matte yellow and the matte green are a little bit different. I hope this marks a turning point for Tarte. I feel like they're kind of making themselves irrelevant a little bit. I mean, they're not making themselves irrelevant to everyone. There's, of course, people who still love these soft, mauve neutral tones. I'm one of them some of the time. But personally, I'm not really looking to add those products to my collection anymore at this point. But that's going to wrap up this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Leave me comments down below letting me know what new releases have caught your attention lately. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give my video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'm actually posting five videos a week now while I'm stuck home quarantined. So that's super exciting. I've been loving it. It's been keeping me busy, keeping my mood up. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye! Just kidding, I need to check trend mood because sometimes when I film these videos, as I'm filming, something new comes out and she posts about it and then I'm like, darn it, I wanted to talk about it. Okay. I think we're good today. I think we're in the clear. If not, I'm just going to talk about it next week. I got a scooch. The arsony, ar arsony.